Well, let's be honest, it was never likely to last, was it? We are starting to slide in a championship table after that positive start. We've got the same old problems we need to have a chat about again, and we also face two top playoff contenders. This could get a little tricky. Hello and welcome along to part 61 of the head coach with me, Daniel. We are flying along at the start of this season with Ipswich and today we've got two very big games. We are in sixth place in the league as you can see and in this one after the second international break of the year we face third place Leeds and seventh place West Brom as the race for the playoffs looks like it might be on in the early stages. Now as we mentioned in the intro the dream start hasn't continued. We have had problems with injuries but we're still up there and we're still competing and for that I'm very grateful at the moment. We've still got a couple of problems which we'll reflect on in a minute. But if you want to see how we've been getting on and crucially how we do in these two games, then please do put a thumbs up on it. You could argue that we've not played a lot of the top sides yet and that would be a fair judgment. But let's go and see how we have been getting on and which injuries have been hampering us. Because if we have a look at the schedule since you were last with me, it's actually not been a great run at all. We're still up in that mix, but we'd won our first four games of the season, so that was always going to be the case. The problem I have at the moment is that we talked about it at the end of the last episode. We got that injury to Kane Ferdinand against Sunderland, and I said, I think we're better equipped to deal without him this year because last season he was a one-man team. When he wasn't playing well or when he was injured, we couldn't win matches consistently. Well, the same has happened this season, and that is a big worry for me. He's been joined by other key injuries in the meantime, but we're still doing enough. We've won a couple of games. We've picked up a point. We've not really done very well at home, but otherwise, it's still all right. Let's have a look at what happened last time. And maybe I'm reading too much into it because after that Sunderland game, we played against Tottenham in the international break. We had players missing. They had players missing. It was a very odd experience. But still, we've seen it before and we've mentioned it. I always go back to last year's FM. The Hemel save, we played against Liverpool, we lost 9-0 and it derailed our season. And it just seems like that the cup games have so much of a bearing on confidence. We rotated, we actually did alright. We came back from 3-0 down to 3-2. We pushed them all the way, Hitchin and Jack Johnston scored goals. But it wasn't enough, we went out. It was a valiant effort, but not to be. After that, back-to-back -back defeats away at Plymouth 1-0 and away at Rotherham 2-0. But they were both games with Ferdinand out injured, as was the Spurs game. Against Wigan, we did find a way to win. A George Hurst hat-trick was brilliant. It was a more physical performance. There was lots of quality and George Hurst was sublime. Against Derby, we lost at home. Again, no Ferdinand, so only one win in five without him. Daniel Jebison scored a hat-trick, sent off in the FA Cup at the weekend, wasn't he, against Wrexham. George Hurst scoring our goal again. A really decent effort to get a point at home to Stoke. Ben Woodburn came off injured after coming on. Paul Ferdinand made his comeback. I waited and I waited to make sure he was fit. He played an under-21 game for 60 minutes. He was in good shape. Said he was fine to play 75. Got injured. Dennis Adenaran scored our goal. We got a point. In the last game, though, against Swansea, a crucial 1-0 win. A late George Hurst penalty in a game we dominated. Daniel Grimshaw did still make some big saves, but we thoroughly deserved to get the three points. Paul Ferdinand back in the team for that one. But as we saw last season, when he comes back from injury, he takes about two months to get up to speed. That's going to be a problem for now. The next two games are big ones at the top. The run of fixtures are quite tricky as well. We've lost against the likes of Plymouth and Rotherham, who are recovering but aren't doing that well. The other game we lost against Derby is a side in fourth, which makes me a little bit more worried for today. But overall, if you'd offered me this at the start of the season, I'd have been very happy. George Hurst is the joint top scorer in the league. Simpson is playing very well, which leads me on to an injury problem. He's just coming back to fitness, has missed a few games too. So you've seen that we've been scoring less goals, creating less chances. Ferdinand was out for most of it, and so was Simpson. He's got seven goal contributions in seven games. We're not doing as well without him. With both of those out, with Mola out, who's been missing at the moment, and a few other little knocks here and there, it really isn't the stage for us to compete. Add to that that we are getting in September, October, November, where we've got Tuesday night fixtures back to back. So there we go, three midweeks in a row since the Tottenham game, and we just haven't got the squad to compete. 
As soon as we had a week off, we then won 1-0 at Swansea and looked fine. So maybe the start was a little bit misleading. We're not going to blow the league away and run away with an automatic promotion contender. But I do think we're going to finish in the top half this year if we can keep most people fit most of the season. We get through to the dynamics, everything's good. The club is all on the same page and we've not managed to upset anyone yet, which is a bit of a miracle and probably helped by injuries in truth. So let's go and get through to the fixtures. The first of them today is Leeds. It is a miracle they didn't go up last season. Stephen Presley is remarkably in charge there. They've still got Tyler Adams. They've still got the likes of Sinistera. Their front two or their front three, Sinistera, Moisey Keane and Ian Acho is ridiculous. You look at their substitutes bench, it would probably walk into most teams and going even outside the squad. They've got quality throughout. A lot of young players, a little bit of dotted experience. Christensen's still there. Walt Face in from Leicester. Mason Holgate in from Everton. It's a side that shouldn't be in a championship. It's as simple as that. The Leeds are getting stuck there again. They're in a playoff fight with us at the moment. But looking on paper at their attacking line, I feel like we might struggle. Let's go and pick our best 11 for today. We've had an international break. I don't know who's been playing away. We know that our left winger Howard is a Gibraltar regular. Raheem Harper might have featured for Jamaica. So let's just go and pick our 11. We'll be back in a minute to run through it. And I think this sort of highlights our problem as we look into the game. As I predicted, Howard is struggling. He's playing every minute for Gibraltar and I'm not surprised. But it does mean that he's not really fit for the first game after. Woodburn is still recovering from injury. Harper is still recovering from injury and international duty. Simpson is fit enough for 75, but I learned from the Ferdinand one. We've got a big game at home in three days. I'd rather he's fit for that. It's the more winnable match. We've then got to make a decision on Ferdinand who's not match fit. Do I start him? Do I bring him off the bench? And I've probably got to make a decision in midfield too, because I had played Jack Johnston in centre midfield as our playmaker. But I'm looking ahead to midweek, and are we going to then need him as a striker? because George Hurst can't really do two in three days. He always struggles for fitness. Do I start them both and just take one off? That might be an option too. So I either start with this team and know that I have to take off one of the strikers, Paul Ferdinand, and probably get Simpson a run out, or I can put them all on the bench and basically admit we're not going to win this game. I've looked at the players that have come in on the right. Hitchin has done okay. He scored in the cup game, done all right off the bench in a championship, but he's not the same level. And Mark Sykes has been, well, a little bit past his prime, shall we say, this season. So I think I'm going to stick with the 11 we've picked here. Is Howard out for Campbell. The rest of it played the last game. But we are, what, three or four players short of our first 11. Howard, Harper, Simpson would definitely all be starting. So our 11 for today in full is Grimshaw in goal. Swanson and Davis, the fullback. Davis, the former lead youngster, of course. Edmondson and Wolfenden as centre-half. Johnston and Adenarant in the midfield too. Adenarant playing really well this season. He's been one of the standout performers. Ferdinand building fitness on the right. He won't do 90. Miller as the number 10. And then Campbell in off the left. George Hurst up front. Let's go and get into it. See if we can compete. And here we go. They've got the big front three of Leeds. And it looks like Tyler Adams is skippering the side from right back. That's despite the fact Holgate's on the bench. They've got Tapia in midfield. It's such a good side. Let's go and get through the dressing room. We know we can do it. We're going to start balanced and we'll drop to cautious if need be. Jimmy Campbell will be an inverted winger instead of a traditional one. He's a right footer coming in for Howard. And then the rest of the team I leave as is. I hope we can do enough. I really hope we can compete. But I don't count our chances as good for this one. Let's go and get to Ellen Road. Little pocket of Ipswich fans in the corner. They're playing a 4-3-3. We're trying to press that holding midfielder. Let's go and see how we get on. Into the first half we go. We're nearly 20 minutes in and while we've not had a shot and Leeds have been the better side, there's been nothing clear cut. And now we're back for the first highlight with us on the attack. Ferdinand beating three. Oh, the shot's just wide. It's a cracking effort. Paul Ferdinand showing some magic there. But the finishing touch is just not quite back up to speed. And as a result, it stays goalless. But lovely play. Maybe these lads just save their best performances on camera. That's where we've scored the most goals this season, isn't it? When you guys are watching as Ivanov picks it up in midfield to Jones. Wide to Adams, who is at right back today. Be impressed by Campbell, and it's back to Jones. He finds Ivanov. Forward to Sinistera. Has time and support. Goes back to Adams. It's such a good side here. Sinistera again, robbed by Campbell, but it's back to the centre half. Leeds trying to play out from the back. Trying to play total football here. But are they going to get caught, or are they going to break free? 
Here comes Jones to Adams again. They've gone nowhere here in 30 seconds. Then they flick the switch. Sinistera beats Davis. He gets towards the byline. Goes back again. Now through to Sinistera. We can't compete with that. Across the goal to Gray. And there it is. 1-0 to Leeds United. That is a team that is too good for the championship. Well, five minutes to the break here. I'm not actually too disappointed with this performance. I think we've done all right. And we're finishing the half with a corner kick, which Leif Davis will take. Can he find that delivery to the back post? There's options up there. Edmondson's one of them. Loses out to Tapia. Cleared as far as Adenaran, who's robbed in possession. Wins it back for Edmondson. Adenaran picks it up again. It was really scrappy and chaotic, that. No quality at all. Wolfenden on the right to Johnston. Lovely turn, but straight into Moisey Keane. He nicks the ball and carries it forward. Sinistera goes wide to Adams. Leif Davis well out of position. He took the corner on the other side. Adams to the byline. Shots in at Grimshaw is very easy to deal with. Half-time, 1-0 leads. They look like they could threaten us on the counter all day. But we've been competitive, and that is more than I could say last year. Instead of trying to sneak a point, instead of losing 2-0 and being frustrated on the road, we're really giving a good account of ourselves. The lads are happy. We want to keep it up. And if we can get a bit of confidence, maybe the goal will be coming. But again, as Jones hits the post and in, we've given away a sloppy goal from a set piece. And the amount of work I do on them is so annoying that we continue to concede from them. I've tried my best, but I can't find the answer now. So let's just see if we can bite back. It might be a chance to rest players, maybe bring some back to fitness. Because if we're looking at our front four, Simpson was crucial the first game, as were Howard. They scored five of the six goals between them, and Simpson didn't miss chances like that. Ferdinand's not fit. Hurst we need to save for midweek. But that whole attack in midfield three is not what it was at the start of the year. That's the big issue here. Let's go and make some changes with midweek in mind. The first ones are going to be Ferdinand off. He will be replaced on the right by Hitchin. He'll just become a traditional winger on support. Dougie Miller will come off for Simpson, who's making his comeback. Campbell I'm going to leave on, mainly because Howard will play in midweek. We'll make the rest in a little while. Leif Davis struggling on the left. He's got a lot to deal with out there. But let's go and get through 10 more. Then we'll make our last three changes. As it's Leeds on the front foot again now. This game does risk getting away from us if we're not careful. Tapia with the through ball out to the left to Souza. Are we just going to have to sort of count our losses here and go cautious? As Gray puts the ball in, Wolfenden heads away. Simpson can bring it clear. So good to have him back on the pitch. A big impact so far this season, and we really missed him when he's not there. As Adenaran finds Campbell, out to Davis. Support down the left, but goes alone. Carries it to the byline. No one presses him. Chance to cross here. There's options in the middle. That ball was over hit, but it will fall for Hitchin. Back across to Simpson, and look at that. It's over the line. There's no doubt in it. He's been back on the pitch for seven minutes. And Ewan Simpson has already scored. This is why we've not scored as many goals or won as many games. When him and Ferdinand are out, we are a very different team. Let's go and make the final changes here. I'm going to give Johnston a rest so, just so we've got one fit striker in the week. He'll be replaced by Alex Mowat. Adenaran will switch to the playmaker role. Just thinking I could go for Akinola instead actually. I don't know who's better rated. Maybe Mowat because he's motivated at the moment. Leif Davis at left back has struggled. We're going to bring on Trey Hume. Again, try and keep people fit. And then I'm looking further forward. I've got to take Campbell off. He's on a yellow. He's shattered. Mark Sykes will be the inverted winger. This is the team we're going for to finish. We're back in the game. And although it's not as high quality, it is fresh legs. As Keane gets down the right for Leeds. It might be over again in a minute. Cross the box to Edmondson who clears. To Campbell. What is he doing back there? He just stood still and waited to lose possession. Does win it back in fairness to him and breaks down the left to Adenaran. He carries it to halfway. One of those has got to be a foul. Yes, they got the ball in the end, but they slid through from behind and went through the back of him to get it. And it's out to Gray on the left-hand side. Leeds coming forward again. Back to Asensal, to Sinistera. Lovely turn and shot. The flex to Iheanacho. He heads over the bar. And with 15 to go, look, Leeds have been the better side, but we've still got a chance of nicking something here. Let's encourage the lads. Let's get them back on side. One more chance, please. Get on the front foot. Can we go for it? I'm going to go attacking. We've got to chase the game. Mark Hitchin has now picked up an injury. It's just happening so much this year. As Mauer puts a corner into the back post, headed away. Hitchin will chase it, but he's not fit enough to get there. Sort of on one leg at the minute with a twisted knee. It's back to Chambers. Will Leeds get the late third? We've thrown a lot of men forward here. It might come back to haunt us, but Adenaran does well. Wins it for Wolfenden and Hitchin. I want him attacking the fullback, not standing in the centre circle. Back to Wolfenden. 
90 seconds to get this goal. Can we build a flowing move? No, Mowick gives it away. That's why he's not a first teamer anymore. He's not at the same level. Friedel picks it up at the back. Over the top to Mavididi. Brilliant work from Wolfenden, who then gives it away straight after. Grimshaw makes a very good save with his legs. Trey Hume plays out from the left-hand side. That is aimless. The subs are not the same quality. Mowit, whether it's Hume, whether it's Sykes on the left, they're all giving the ball away here. And it looks like Leeds are going to see it out. Sinistera in. Swanson heads away, but we're still under pressure from Samuel Smith. Hitchin flies into a tackle. No idea why. Asensau over the top. Sinistera keeps it. Lovely timing by the corner flag. And that's going to be it. Out for a corner kick. No idea why we needed to see all of this, but Leeds are going to win 2 1. To be fair, they've deserved it, but we've competed. We've looked okay. The only problem is yet more injuries and yet more fatigue. Will Hurst, Will Swanson, Will Adenaran recover? I'm not too sure. And how long are the other boys going to be out for? Through the dressing room we go. Leeds win by two goals to one. We'll be back in a moment for West Brom. This one, we've probably got to get a result in. We're back to look at what is now one of the longest pages in our inbox messages, which is the fitness test screen. Ewan Simpson probably can start today, but can't finish the match. Ben Woodburn is not fit enough. I've put him in the 21s this week. He played 60 minutes for them without getting injured, which is remarkable. Mark Hitchin picked up a knock in the last game. He's not yet fit to play. And Tim Akinola does seem to be all right. So let's go and have a look at what team we can put out today. Is everyone fit again? And the assistant manager here, as you can see, keeps telling me to go to cautious. So maybe I'm more progressive as a manager than you guys are giving me credit for. Let's go and get through to the team selection. Swanson is the only one not fit. So Trey Hume is in for him. Toffolo will go on to the bench. Raheem Harper is back and can start in centre midfield. We've also got Howard back who can start on the left wing. But at the same time, as we bring Simpson back in for Miller, everyone who's fit is in the squad today. So I'm having a look at this team. I feel like it's the best we can do. We've made four changes from the last game. Three first teamers coming back in and one dropping out due to fatigue. So Hume's in at right back. Simpson's back as number 10. Let's hope he does as well as he did off the bench in the weekend game. And then Ferdinand stays in. Howard is back on the left-hand side. And Raheem Harper back in centre midfield. It does give us a bit more depth on the bench. It does give us a little more quality overall. But let's go and submit the team into the second game today. It's Ipswich v West Brom in the race for the playoffs. Well, here we go then. West Brom flexing their muscles. Seven changes and they still look strong. Sam Field, Ryan Longman, Carl and Grant all coming in. And look at the ones dropping out. They've got quality on the bench. They've got a great squad. This is what we're competing with to try and reach the playoffs. And we are only in what our third year back at this level as a club. Second year for us in charge. Maybe we're expecting too much to compete for the playoffs, but if we can show, like we did against Leeds, that we're competitive against these teams, then maybe I'll have a bit more confidence going through the season. Not many away fans in. West Brom did actually have a poor season last year. They seem to be a bit better so far in this one. But let's go and get into the first half and see how they get on. First shots for us, but it's not a highlight and it's not on target. We are having more of the ball. But it's been a boring start to the game. The goals are drying up. The confidence, the fitness is drying up. And although Simpson and Ferdinand are back in, they're not fit. And that's the issue here, as it's a Williams corner for West Brom. Into the front post of field. And again, it's another free header. What on earth is going on at the front post from corners? I'm going to have to go and look at my tactics again. We'll be back in a minute. Well, I learned nothing from that, as we're already doing as much as we can. Though we're a threat from set pieces ourselves. Howard heads that one just over. Great to have him back for that as well. Six foot one, big in the air. He's a quality threat from a set piece. But with 10 minutes to the break, it remains goalless. We've had no shot on target until the last minute of the half. And the expected goal suggests that, well, neither side have done particularly a great deal going forward. So let's go and give the fans their money's worth, get into the second half. To be honest, it's not been the worst display in the world. And this would be a good result. But despite being a bit more front-footed and playing better football, without those key flair players producing the goods, we're starting to look a bit like last year's team, which is a worry as Gibson gives it to Williams and Garn up to Evans. Carlin Grant, geez, I forgot his name there. Hume's made a mistake at the back. Grant's in. Oh, it's so annoying. And look at that. The one first team player that can't play, and it's his replacement that makes a mistake. How it's Grimshaw's fault, I don't know. We've just not got a big enough squad. And although it is bigger than last year, it's not good enough. The backup team is noticeably different. 
And that's a poor goal. How can you miss headers like that? It's so frustrating. He could have walked back and still won that, which is the annoying bit. As Grant gets down the left-hand side, chance to cross into Evans. We're falling apart. Wolfinder misses it. Fink scores. What's changed? I don't know what's changed from earlier in the season. Grimshaw's apparently made a mistake again. Oh, it's infuriating. I got so excited at the start of the year. And now it's individual errors again. I'm going to berate them. What a crap start to the second half. We're 65 gone. We're knackered everywhere. It's a real problem for us. The front five are all knackered. And the only one that's got a little bit of fitness is Simpson, but he's coming back from injury. So again, I'm going to cut my losses. We've got games coming up against sides lower in the table. We've got to try and get results from them because this is now going into a two-month stretch of poor form and we've got to deal with it. So George Hurst is going to come off for Johnston. Campbell on the left for Howard. Simpson will come off for Miller. I've got no one who can go on the right. So I'll probably have to... Oh, what do I do here? This is a tricky one. So who can play over on the right that's currently in the middle? Miller can do it if need be. Campbell must be able to. No, can't play off there at all. So we're going to put Miller on the right-hand side. We're going to put Mauer as the number 10. And then Adanaran will come off for Akinola. I think that's the best we can do with it. Harper or Mauer could drop in. I'm going to leave Mauer further forward. Miller will be an advanced playmaker on attack. And then Campbell will be an inverted winger on support. There's the team. Five changes made. All the stars are off. What a frustrating day. Wolfenden, Hume, Grimshaw, individual errors. The set piece defending, I just can't explain anymore. We've done everything right. Got all of those big men at the front post. And again, free header. Free header in a six yard box. This is infuriating me. We've done everything right. And there's nothing different from what was happening at the start of the season. And is it just what you guys were saying in the comments? And maybe you were right. Don't judge it on playing whole. Don't judge it on playing sides expected to finish mid-table. When you play the top seven or eight, this is what's going to happen. And maybe we've got to accept we're not playoff contenders. We're a mid-table team still. We're just going to play better football against the worst sides. As Campbell nearly curls in a brilliant strike. Just wide of the post, the keeper was scrambling. And with 20 to go, it's the stats that frustrate me because it's been a fairly even game. But we've given away really bad goals as Miller carries it forward into the box. Lovely effort just wide. The cutting edge has gone. The confidence has gone. And this is the problem. When you're in a slump, how on earth do you get out? Same number of shots. West Brom have only had four on target. Expected goals just over one. They've scored three of them. A 3-0 defeat is harsh on us, but you can't make mistakes like that. Grimshaw gets a 5.5. I'm actually going to go and have an individual chat with him, but that wasn't good enough. We're not competing with those top six. We're still in seventh place in the league. We're competitive, but we are not as good as those top sides. We've lost to Leeds. We've lost to Derby. We've lost to West Brom, and we've been thoroughly beaten by all of them. Norwich are the best side we've beaten, but that was a Derby. Big concern. Let's look at the schedule. I'm looking at December. It's a horrid run of fixtures, isn't it? Burnley, Forest, Bristol City and Peterborough. They're all up in that top X section, aren't they? Yeah, they're all in the top nine. Forest and Peterborough are the top two. If we look at the championship now, that is five defeats in our last eight matches. And after what was a brilliant start to the season, the goals are drying up, the defensive record's getting worse, and a lot of players are picking up injuries and not getting back to fitness in time. When they come back, they're slow to get back to form. And we ain't got time for that at the moment. The backup team is still nowhere near the standard. But we will get there and we'll be fine this year. We're 7th in the league at the end of October. And we've got to remember that. Our next game is at home to Luton Town. Who are in that relegation mix. So hopefully that will be a chance to get 3 points. But if you're looking forward to seeing how we get on in the next couple of months. Hopefully some easier fixtures than the ones I've shown you there. Then please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the performances because I'd argue we didn't deserve to lose by an aggregate of 5-1 there. But that's the reality of the situation. If you want to stay up to date and find out how we get on the rest of the year and whether we can stay in the outside playoff mix, then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Tomorrow, we will be starting our first European fixture in our Build a Nation save with Distillery. It's also a transfer special. It'll be action-packed. So please do check that one out before we return here on Friday. But thank you very much for watching. Back to heartbreak with Ipswich Town. And maybe the head coach. It gives us glimpses. But we just cannot find consistent form this year. Back in a couple of days to see if we can rediscover it.